People in northern Georgia are freaking out because their yards are being taken over by huge alien spiders that are covering everything in thick clouds of spiderweb. Here are the details. The Guardian reports that northern Georgia is suffering from an infestation of giant invasive spiders called Droro spiders. Going by the scientific name Trichonophilia clavata, these spiders are having a very visible effect on the people of the region, as they spin dense clouds of spiderweb that can be seen as deep as 3 meters. The invasive species was first spotted in Georgia in 2014, but this year their numbers have exploded and people are finding their yards covered in dense clouds of spiderweb. It doesn't help that these large and spooky webs also contain multiple large spiders that, when fully grown, can each easily cover a large man's hand. Joro spiders are common in Japan, China, Korea, and Taiwan. It is unclear how they made their way to the U.S. Researchers say the particular abundance of the spiders this year could have been caused by changes in weather. Will Hudson, an entomologist at the University of Georgia, said that he had killed more than 300 of the spiders as they made his porch unusable by covering it with clouds of spiderweb. The webs are a real mess, Hudson said. Nobody wants to come out of the door in the morning, walk down the steps, and get a face full of spiderweb. Florida has finally found a venomous new animal that is new, but not new in the sense that it's an invasive species that's devastating the local ecosystem. Here are the details. The Miami Herald reports that scientists have found a new species of venomous spider in Miami that looks like a small, shiny black tarantula. It's called the Pine Rockland Trapdoor Spider and it is indeed a relative of the tarantula. The new spider was first found on the grounds of Zoo Miami. With legs extended, the female can measure up to 7 centimeters wide. This is a trapdoor spider, meaning it lives in a burrow with a hinged cover, like a trapdoor, to hide from predators and ambush unlucky prey. Luckily, the spider's bite is only as painful as a bee's sting to humans. The spiders themselves can be eaten by birds and they can be targeted by wasps who inject wasp eggs into them, which would later hatch as larvas and then devour the spider from the inside. However, the biggest danger to the arachnid is the loss of its habitat. The first specimen was found in critically endangered Pine Rockland forest surrounding Zoo Miami. It is likely that this species is limited to the small area of threatened habitat, which means it could be threatened itself. Although many people would be glad that this scary and venomous cousin of the tarantula is probably heading for extinction, scientists are already making plans to try and save this rare species. We hope you don't suffer from arachnophobia. According to the BBC, the reason why there's an increase of spiders appearing in people's homes is because it's mating season from September until October. Professor Adam Hart, an entomologist who conducted research on the behavioral patterns of spiders and how they're affected during different seasons, found that 82% of the spiders seen in houses are male. He explained female spiders are usually seen in webs formed in garages or windowsills. While the male spiders generally wander around looking for a dry place to mate, Professor Hart suggested keeping doors and windows closed and keeping the house clean to deter spiders. The researcher also said the public should ignore old wives' tales such as using peppermint oil, citrus fruit, and even ostrich eggs to prevent the spread of spiders around the house. Spiders may not have any wings, but it turns out all the eight-legged critters need to fly is a little charge. Spiders have been known to release long strands of silk to carry them up to 2.5 miles up in the air and over a thousand miles out to sea, a process known as ballooning. The common belief is that the strands catch onto the wind and help generate lift, but since it doesn't explain how spiders balloon even on days with light wind, another theory emerged, electrostatic repulsion. When spiders release their silk, it picks up a negative charge, which repels the Earth's similarly negatively charged surface and creates enough force to propel them into the air. A University of Bristol study tested the theory by putting the arachnids on vertical cardboard strips in a plastic box and then generated an artificial electric field. Sensory hairs on the spider's feet detected the charge and prompted them to start ballooning. They were able to take off despite no wind, but dropped when the electric field was turned off. While the study proved that spiders can fly using electricity alone, scientists believe air currents may still play a role in it. Previous studies have recorded the crawlers raising their front legs into the wind, possibly to determine how strong it is.
They're back. The first live Asian giant murder hornet of 2021 has been spotted in Washington state, and it was caught in the act of living up to its name, attacking a wasp nest. The news has scientists worried that America's honeybees could get wiped out. Here are the details. Asian giant hornets, colloquially known as murder hornets, are back in Washington state after a resident spotted a live insect, officials at the Washington State Department of Agriculture confirmed on Thursday, August 12th. The sighting occurred on August 11th near a rural area east of Blaine in Whatcom County, Washington. This is roughly two miles from where the first murder hornet nest, which contained 500 live specimens, including 200 queens, was eradicated in October of 2020. The state's agriculture department said it will set live traps in an attempt to catch a live hornet, tag it, and track it back to the nest. Murder hornets kill honeybees, which are already under siege from mites, diseases, and other factors. They usually attack honeybee hives in the late summer or early fall. A small group can kill an entire honeybee hive in a matter of hours. Normally found in East Asia, nobody knows quite how the hornets came to America, but since 2019, there have been several sightings in Washington state. With a length of 5 centimeters, they are the world's largest hornets and they have an extremely painful sting. According to the Washington State Department of Agriculture, the hornets enter a slaughter phase where they kill bees by decapitating them. They then defend the hive as their own while taking the brood to feed their own brood. The agency has already killed six or seven hives in Washington state since 2019. U.S. scientists managed to outsmart the dangerous and highly destructive Asian giant hornet by using a series of clever techniques to find and destroy one of their nests in Washington state. The Asian giant hornet also goes by the name murder hornet, and this was the first nest to be found by using dental floss to tie tracking devices onto three of the hornets. One of the murder hornets then led the tracking team to a tree that contained a whole nest of the species. The nest of around 200 hornets was then sucked out of the tree with a vacuum hose. After that, the tree was cut down and destroyed to make sure no other hornets could survive. The invasive murder hornet has a powerful sting and can spit venom. They target honeybees which pollinate crops and can destroy a colony of honeybees in just a matter of hours. Asian giant hornets are among the world's largest wasps. The queens can reach over 5 centimeters or 2 inches in length. Their venomous sting can penetrate humans' protective clothing. But the number of people they kill each year is low. They kill around 40 people annually in Asia, according to the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C. When an Asian giant hornet enters a honeybee colony, it begins a slaughter phase in which it kills bee after bee and can destroy the colony in a few hours. Apparently, murder hornets, swaths of locusts, and a pandemic are not enough for 2020. Now we're adding Asian gypsy moths to the list. It may not seem like it by the looks of them, but gypsy moths are deadly to vegetation. According to the Washington State Department of Agriculture, in 2017, European gypsy moth caterpillars defoliated around 33% of the entire state of Massachusetts. Well, experts are now saying Asian gypsy moths are even more destructive and somehow they've made their way to the US. Here's what we know. A recent proclamation issued by the governor of the state of Washington, Jay Inslee, warns about the detection of Hokkaido gypsy moths in areas in Snohomish County, Washington. This is the first detection of the species in the US, the Washington State Department of Agriculture said in a press release. The Asian gypsy moth is native to Russia, according to the National Invasive Species Information Center from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Asian gypsy moths measure 3.5 inches long, or about 9 centimeters long, and female moths can lay from 500 to 1,000 eggs, according to the U.S. Customs and Border Protection. In a press release, the Washington Department of Agriculture said European gypsy moth caterpillars eat more than 500 types of trees, plants, and shrubs. However, Carla Salp, a spokeswoman for the department, told UPI that Asian gypsy moths pose a greater threat than European gypsy moths because they can consume more species of plants. If the species establishes itself in Washington, it would become a threat to forest ecosystems and would lead to quarantine restrictions and increased homeowner pesticide use, according to Washington's Agriculture Department. But fear not, help is on the way. Washington's Agriculture Department is planning on starting treatments to control the moth pest in Boulevard Bloods and Woodway, Washington. 
Low-flying airplanes will be applying BTK, a bacteria and a biological insecticide used to eradicate gypsy moths in affected areas. Swaths of locusts usually come in waves in East African countries throughout the year, a cycle that, although challenging, farmers have learned to handle. But what happens when you get hit by both a massive plague of crop-devouring desert locusts and a world pandemic? According to a report by the Globe and Mail, East African countries could be facing a food crisis as waves of locusts have hit crops in the region since the end of 2019. A third wave of the insects is expected to hatch and spread in June and July. Just one locust can travel 150 kilometers in 24 hours and is capable of eating its own weight in crops each day. A small swarm of locusts, which could be around 40 to 80 million, can cover about a square kilometer and eat the same amount of food consumed by 35,000 humans in a day. On top of crops being impacted by the waves of locust plagues, Stephanie Hansen, a senior vice president of One Acre Fund, told the Center for Strategic and International Studies that farmers' incomes have also been affected due to restrictions put in place during the pandemic, which limit their capacity to sell food in local markets. The pandemic has also made it difficult for farmers to get rid of the locusts. Hansen noted that pilots in Kenya who fly pesticide aircraft are required to land at local airports before the national curfew is lifted. According to an assessment conducted by the Ethiopian government in collaboration with the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations and NGOs working in the region, the spread of desert locusts has left around 1 million Ethiopian people in need of emergency food relief. What actions must be taken to help these people survive two crises at the same time? Well, among many other suggestions, the assessment states that people must be provided chemicals to deal with the locusts and other pests ravaging their crops and, of course, farmers need to be provided food supply for their livestock and agricultural input must be distributed. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.